Christ. How many believe that today? Yeah. That song doesn't get you going on the world, Will. But thank you, Stephen. Thank you, guys. Works perfect. So we are talking and continuing. And don't tell me this clicker. Uh, you and me, Gordon. Clicker. <laughs> clicker is not a champion today. But uh, go ahead, Nick Cypher. Script. They came out with a song called Hall of Fame. Many of you recognize that. Many of you are looking and confusing. Um, why are you doing this? Because you are a champion in Christ. You have a destiny. Last week we talked about who you are in Christ. That you're not a mistake. You are a masterpiece. Today we're going to talk about what you can do as being a masterpiece of God. And when you talk about this song, this will be my cue to you. It says, when you're standing in the Hall of Fame, and the world's going to know your name, because you burn with the brightest flame, and the world is going to know your name, and you'll be on the walls of fame. This is a song that speaks of destiny. A world in which everyone finds their purpose. You are a champion. It's about being a champion. But what is true purpose, and what is destiny, and most important, how does one find destiny? Because that's what we're all looking for. What's our destiny? What's our purpose? Jesus calls people to join him in a great purpose. And he walked this earth to find such persons. He didn't look down the corridors of the house. He didn't look in the courtyards of the temple. He didn't go to the most powerful, the most wise, the most holy. He went to the most unlikely places and found sinners, ordinary people, just like you and just like me. And he invited us to join him in something greater than ourselves, a great divine purpose. So we're going to open up to Luke chapter 5. If you have your Bibles, Please open there. We have pew Bibles. Most of you probably use you version on your phones. Go there. If you have this memorized, that's great too. But I'm going to read it out of this one. And it's on page 1985 in my Bible. So I don't know if that helps you, but it definitely helped me. Okay. So we're going to look to Luke, 20, Luke 5. And here Jesus is out doing ministry. He's been healing. He's been casting out spirits. And finally, he says it is time to get people involved in what I'm doing. Because Jesus wants you involved. And so we open up to Luke chapter 5. And this is what we read. One day, as Jesus was staying by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. Because that's where you got to start. Get started in God's word. That's where God gives you direction. It's where faith is built. Faith comes by hearing the message, the message of Christ. That's what Paul tells us in Romans. So it starts with the word of God. He saw at the letter's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats and went the line to Simon and he asked him to put out a little bit further on the shore. Then he sat down and he taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deeper water and let down your nets for the catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked all night and haven't caught a thing. But because you say so, I will let down my nets. Now here's your first point. Jesus wants us to join him in what he's doing. He doesn't want to leave you out. He wants to invite you to the party. You're not being picked last in line. Or not being picked at all. You're front and center saying, I want you on my team. I need you on my team. You have a purpose. You have a destiny. You are part of Team Jesus. And that's the team that wins, right? Because yeah. I've read the end of the book and Jesus wins. So you're on the winning team. Amen? <laughs> it's a good thing. You don't want to be a losing team. You don't want to be on the winning team. Jesus puts you on the winning team. He wins. So let's continue our story. So Luke 5. 
6. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Because Jesus said, hey Simon, let me borrow your boat. Let's go out fishing. And the first thing that Simon does is he comes up with an excuse. He says, I've been there. I've done that. Lord, I've been out all night, and I promise you, there's no fish out there. I'm sure Jesus is like, but you haven't taken me with you yet. <laughs> Let me show you what I can do. But how many times do we do this? Oh, we've never done that before, or we tried that, and it didn't work before. And we come up with excuse and excuse. If you always do the same thing that you always have done, you're always going to get what you always got. So it's time to put those excuses and those limitations behind us because Jesus looks beyond our limitations. He looks beyond our excuses. Because that's what faith is. It's just taking us out of our weaknesses and putting ourselves into His strength and watching Him do accomplishing things in our lives. I love what Paul says. Because some of you might feel this. Oh, well, I, I look what I've done in my life. I've messed up so many times. I've sinned so many times. Hey, welcome to the club. So have I. Oh, well, you know, I, I just don't have that education. I'm not that smartest. I'm not the strongest. I don't have much money. What can Jesus do with me? You know, every person that God called came up with some excuse of why they couldn't serve him. Abraham and Sarah, oh, we're too old. We can't have a child. Jeremiah, well, I'm too young. I can't go speak in front of nations. Elijah got depressed and hid in the cave. He thought he was the only one left. And God said, no, I've got 120 more prophets. Every single one. Moses said, I can't speak in front of Pharaoh. I can barely speak in front of you. I don't want to speak. But when they stepped out of their weaknesses and they stepped into faith, God did great things through them. And now, here we are in the New Testament, and guess what? People are still making excuses of why they can't serve them. Yes. Just like Peter. But you and I, we make the same excuses. That's why I love what Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many of you were influential. Not many of you were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things. Yes. In other words, but God chose you despite those weaknesses and those limitations. And why did He do this? He chose this to shame the wise. God chose the weak things. I'm a weak thing. I'm always a weak thing. I'm a weak thing every day. But guess what? God chose me. And he did this to shame the strong. Because he says, where you're weak, I will be strong. Where you're not wise, you will become wise. And he chose the lowly things. That's you and me. So that no one can boast before him. Because he wants to show his strength and his power through you. And if you can do it all in your strength, all in your power, if you have all the wisdom and knowledge, then why would you need God? <coughs> it's called faith. The reason why we're not all knowing and why we're not all powerful and why we're not all rich is because if we were those things, we wouldn't need faith. There'd be nothing to step out into. We wouldn't need God. But when we step out in faith with God, God can do a greater purpose in your life. And that's what Peter and these guys are starting to see. God chose you. So be students, be teachers. Be politicians, be preachers, be believers, be leaders, be astronauts, be champions, be truth seekers. What are they saying there? It's be world changers. Yes, yes, yes. You have the power inside of you. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't reach these things. With God's help, you can do all things. Yes. One of my favorite movies, I know it came out a long time ago, but it's still one of my favorite movies, is The Pursuit of Happiness. And in this movie, you have Will Smith's boy, and I guess he's playing Chris Garner, right? Chris Garner and his child, and they're playing basketball. 
You know, the kid's like, I'm going to be the greatest you know, basketball star. And what's the father say? Because he's been beat down. Because he's been torn down. Because he hasn't reached his dream yet. He says, no, you're not. <coughs> you can't do that. And all of a sudden, it just changes. And he realized when he said to his kids, he just dashed his dreams to the ground. And so he says this. He said, don't ever let someone tell you that you can't do something. Not even me. You got a dream, you got to protect it. When people can't do something themselves, they're going to tell you, you can't do it. You want something, go get it. Period. I know that's not the Bible, but it should be. <laughs> <laughs> the Gospel according to Will Smith, right? <laughs> okay, Lord, don't strike me. Don't strike me. <laughs> but it's so true. There's a story in the Bible that I love. It's in Acts. And what happens is Peter and John, they, they see this paralytical beggar man who can't walk. And the guy asks, well, can you give me some money? And they say, we don't have any money. But what we do have is in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, get up and walk. And the guy jumps to his feet and starts walking around. And he's like, oh my goodness, look what happened. It's a miracle. And something happens. The religious leaders, the ones that say you can't do that, religion comes in and says, no, that's against what we're about. And they said, all right, you're going to be arrested. They arrest Peter and John. And they send them into a court and they start grilling them with questions. And their answers amaze them because these religious, the religious leaders say this. They said, we can tell that these are unordinary, uneducated men. But they have power because they have been with Jesus. Now let that sink in to what the book of Acts is told us there. You might be unordinary. You might not have the greatest spark. You might not be the strongest. But you can accomplish great things on one thing and one thing only. You have been with Jesus. That's the key to success in victory and being a champion in this life to be with Jesus. And guess what? Where you are right now, you're with Jesus. So when you walk out of here today, you're going to have a little bit more victory. You're going to have a little bit more strength. You're going to have a little bit more grace. And you're going to be more of a champion than when you first walked here today because it's not based on your strength. It's based on his strength. It's not based on my education, my knowledge, my wisdom, my whatever. It's based on being with Jesus because he's the power. If you're that today, say amen. Amen. Because you've been with Jesus. So let's continue our story.